Greetings and welcome to all who have joined us today. I am Reverend Rick Sauer. And I'm Reverend Elaine Sauer. This is a joint initiative as Full Communion Partners, St. Chad's Anglican Parish and St. Mark's Lutheran Church bring you a weekly devotion based on the upcoming text for Sunday worship. We invite you to listen to the text, pray with us, reflect on the questions, and then seek ways to engage with the text as a teaser for preparing for your Sunday worship. We open with prayer. God of all wisdom, encourage us to be open to the ways in which you instruct and direct us. Help us to listen, reflect and listen again, that we may grow old, grow in faith and in our relationships with you and in the world. Amen. A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I am the greatest. I am a stable genius. We're number one. We are the champions, my friend. Self-promotion is all the rage these days. And even though we may scoff at it and even rage against it, it seems to work. Those who aggressively and shamelessly promote themselves, their products, their message, their values, seem to get the attention, the accolades, the support, and the success. And this reality does seem to apply in all areas of life, from school to the workplace, from politics to sports, entertainment, from business to nonprofits, from community organizations to church life. It's all about this, look at me and look at what I am doing. Now, to some degree, this can have a positive influence. It can get the competitive juices going. It can motivate us to strive to improve and to perfect aspects of work and life. It can create healthy competition. But this all has a very serious downside. This self-promotion leads to success approach to life, leads us as individuals and as a society to see it as the be-all and the end-all of life. We use this to define all of our life's values, goals, purposes, and relationships. And that is very unhealthy and very detrimental to life. We become self-absorbed pockets of isolation. We become a people that simply uses others for our own ambitions. We deny others their place in life. It creates and fosters the stealing of ideas and credit. It breeds selfishness, suspicion, backstabbing, cheating, hostility, envy, and resentment. It leads to fractured relationships. It leads to fractured and dysfunctional families, neighborhoods, workplaces, communities, and societies. It destroys community and that which truly binds us together. We become blind to the truth of the interconnection of relationships that are so essential to life. Now, while this whole matter is quite rampant today, it is by no means new. It is one of the issues that Paul addresses in his letter to the churches, including his letter to the church in Rome. And so he is moved to remind his listeners and readers, including us, 
that we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Paul exhorts his readers to humility, to be realistic about our gifts and abilities, to recognize that others also have gifts and roles and a calling and purpose from God. It's a call to see that all in the community have an important role and that in Christ no one is superior to another. In a faith community, as in any community, the whole working together in harmony is healthier and more effective than if we try to do it all on our own in order to claim recognition or personal rewards. And Paul points out that this is God's will and purpose for us. Furthermore, we are reminded that Christ is the one who heads and holds the community, the body, together. As much as we would like to have the spotlight on ourselves, the focus is really to be on Christ. And in focusing our attention on Jesus, we find that we encounter one who came to love and to serve. Jesus did not come for the accolades and the glory, but be, to be the one who gives for the sake of the whole world for the sake of the people, for the sake of all creation. In these times when it is tempting to put oneself first, we are pointed to the one who changed the world and our lives by putting others first and by serving. And in following Jesus' teachings and path, we too then become the ones who are not only transformed, but who are also able to influence and transform the world. Amen. And some questions to reflect on. In what ways do we discern the negative influence of everyone thinking only of themselves? In what ways do we discern God's transforming presence and how that makes a positive difference in life? And where can we envision this transformation occurring in our own lives and in the world? Our closing prayer. God of all, grant us the wisdom and insight to be realistic about our lives and our world. Grant us the vision to see how your transforming power can make positive changes in life. Grant us the empowerment and courage to use our collective gifts and vocations to be agents of that change. Amen. Amen. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen.